Hello friends, welcome to my channel Simple Learning Tips. Today we will be discussing about industrial relations. The topics that I have covered here are definition of industrial relations, significance of industrial relations, approaches to industrial relations, what are the who are the various parties involved in industrial relations, industrial relations strategy and successful industrial relations strategy. Now first one definition of industrial relation. This is one of the most simplest uh, definition that I have come across. Industrial relation is concerned with the relationship between management and workers and the role of regulatory mechanism in resolving any industrial dispute. Now this definition means that see industry why industrial relation exist the the term if you if you define it to maintain relationship between industry i mean within the industry okay so industrial relation helps to maintain a harmonious a peaceful relationship between management and employees or workers and the act as a regulatory mechanism in solving any kind of industrial dispute so that is what is the role of industrial rela industrial relations now who are the parties involved in industrial relation first one definitely employers employees or workmen then trade unions see trade unions means sometimes when we have to negotiate to someone we need external external fa extra uh, we, we need an external we need a representative okay the representative from workers itself so to so because if there are thousand employees thousand employees cannot go and uh, negotiate with the management so we need representatives and there are certain organizations who uh, who help these representatives so that that together combine it means that it uh, contributes as trade union so that who, the trade union is also involved is also a part of uh, is one of the party of industrial relation next one obviously employers or management then next is government you know sometimes government will also act as a mediator between management and worker or government will implement their own rules in uh, certain in industries when the when the industrial relations cannot be handled by the organization itself so these are the various parties involved in industrial relation or sometimes you know government may introduce a rule and uh, the industrial relation they will that department or that uh, people who are involved in industrial relation will help to implement the smooth uh, to create will help to create a smooth flow of the government rules and regulations so that is what the uh, so these are the parties who are involved in industrial relation employees trade unions employers and government next one significance of industrial relation why industrial relation has gained so much importance in these years first one to safeguard the interest of the laborer and the management by preventing one of the players from getting a strong hold over the other this means that see management should not have dominance over the employees or vice versa the employees should not have dominance over the management there should be a smooth flow a balance between both that is employees should express their concern and the management should also make amendments or should also attend to the concerns of the employees it's not that management can ignore the concerns of the employees or it, that does not also mean that employees can raise concern over each and everything that they have to face in the working atmosphere so there should be a balance between both these things and that buffer or that cushion is known as industrial relations next point to develop and secure mutual understanding and good relationship among all the players in the industrial setup now this means that industrial relation they help to create a positive environment a friendly atmosphere in the organization next one to maintain industrial peace and harmony by preventing industrial conflicts see i always focus on this point that whenever two or more people or whenever group of people are working together definitely conflict will arise 
मे बी पॉजिटिव कॉन्फ्लिक्ट और नेगेटिव कॉन्फ्लिक्ट बट डेफिनेटली कॉन्फ्लिक्ट डिफरेंस ऑफ ओपिनियन और डिफरेंस इन एटीट्यूड में डेफिनेटली अराइज नाउ आई I have made a detailed video on conflict management. I leave the link in the description box below as well as in the i card. You can click on the i card and uh, you can watch that video. Now here, what I I just want to give a simple example. You, uh, I hope you all might remember the incident that happened in two thousand twelve, which is Manesar plant incident. Uh, what happened is that the indus the workers they outbursted so much the rage and uh, ev and you know the conflict rose to such a level that uh, raised to such a such a level that they beat the gm hr and even burnt him alive that was such an un unfortunate incident that happened in india that happened in manesar plant so after that only industrial relations started gaining more and more importance in india you know these kind of uh, outbursts can happen anywhere so it should be maintained properly so the the uh, the demands of the workers should be met properly so that these kind of unfortunate incidents can be avoided so that is what this means that industrial relation they are they exist to maintain p industrial peace and harmony by preventing any kind of industrial conflict next one to improve the standard of living of the average worker by providing basic and standard amenities see so this means that So, if you see the labor cost that differs from each and every state, I've I've seen that if you if you could if you could see this chart, you can see that in uh, north side the labor cost is actually very less compared to the south side. So, I don't know what is the reason behind that, but these kind of but whatever wages are being provided to the workers, industrial relations. they have to uh, people industrial relations department they have to ensure that because of this wage by this wage the basic necessities or the basic amenities are being provided facilities are being provided to the workers for example you know for the workers who are working in coal factory you know where they have to go dig deep hole and they have to go inside industrial relations they should um, they should ensure that you know proper safety measures are being given to the employees so to the workers so that they should not get any injury so these kind of you know even if they are working in some kind of electrical condition where all the helmets and that uh, you know that uh, gym suits proper gym suits are being provided for the safety of the employees that is very necessary so that is what this point means and also you know whatever wages are being given it should be ensured that at least minimum their basic amenities facilities are being met why why this point is important see if their basic facilities are not met definitely they will be having some kind of grudge inside some kind of you know uh, concerns inside which they will express later on so it's better to avoid that at all and provide good facilities to the employees or if they have any any problems that should be addressed immediately now next point to increase productivity by minimizing industrial conflicts and maintaining harmonious industrial relations that is again a repeat. so if if you if you address and if you try to solve at least resolve the con uh, the concerns of the employees or the workers uh, definitely productivity will increase in the organization to ensure discipline in the organization and industry now this is one of the most uh, important point in industrial relation to maintain discipline i have been talking about the rights the rights that or rights of an employees or workers the, there is an another point to that that along with rights and responsibility uh, rights rights comes the responsibilities and duties the employees also have, should also have some kind of commitment to the industry see suppose uh, work, the workers are coming daily late to to office or uh, the attendance is very low so all these things are there you know um, constant arguing with the supervisor for without any reason all these things should be taken care of and some kind of discipline is, should be maintained in the organization so all these things will be handled by industrial relation i hope the point is clear like uh, say suppose if a person is coming late constantly he should be 
that should be noted and he should be given proper counseling and uh, an industrial relation should ensure that a proper discipline is maintained and he should come regularly to work or regularly on time now to provide a basic framework for the management and the employee to resolve their differences they should make an agenda like i said this industrial relation means the act as a cushion between management and employee they should come up with uh, rules and regulations that is uh, that is both uh, that is feasible to both management and the workers to improve the bargaining capacity of the workers through trade unions like i said if there are 20000 employees in an organization it's impossible to represent the to, uh, it, it is impossible that 20000 people will have to go to the management and raise their concern so there comes the role of trade unions a representative from among the workers now if there is a good industrial relation which is maintained the bargaining capacities of the workers can be improved and with the help of trade unions now next topic is approaches to industrial relation there are various approaches to industrial relation first one is psychological approaches now this approach means that management has different perception and attitude workers has different perception and attitude and because of this difference in perception and attitude conflict arises that is what this approach means this approach focuses on the difference in attitude and perception perception means how we perceive the other person how we analyze the other person or how we see there might be a person uh, you, you are working in an organization or even in your if you are studying in a college you know you are sitting in a classroom just imagine you are sitting in a classroom and a person enters when a person enters the room when a, when a, when, when your fellow classmates enters the room immediately you make an opinion about the other person either by his appearance or your judgment you know your uh, judgment about previous something related to him so you have a perception you have some kind of idea about the other person you might like the person or you might not like the person so if the case where you might not like the person whatever he says you know you will feel irritated that is what this perception about and because of that you develop a kind of attitude to that person now these things will happen in the organization as well management will have their own perception okay their own thinking of uh, various re rules and regulation and the workers may perceive it in some other perception for example suppose you know uh, management is asking the workers to come on time now that is their perception is to improve the productivity so what they might have done is that they might have introduced a time marking attendance something like that like uh, you have to uh, swipe up the card or you have you have a like biometric kind of thing you ha you have to mark the attendance and the time will be noted when you enter the organization this is this this thing or this uh, attendance thing has been introduced by the management just to check just to improve the productivity but the workers they might be having the perception that they are constantly being monitored so then they will they will have they will develop that kind of attitude okay why suddenly we are being monitored we are doing our work correctly we are reaching on time you know there might be people who might be reaching even before time so they might be thinking okay we are doing our work correctly then why we are being you know monitored constantly so then some kind of attitude will be developed and because of that see management did with the perception that okay we have to improve our productivity so if a person will come regularly uh, on time for work productivity will improve so they introduce some kind of attendance marking system but the employees may the employees or the workers may perceive it as okay they are they are trying to monitor us and then because of this a conflict can arise so this this is what that psychological approach so so this is the basic problem and uh, the industrial relation can be approached in this kind of manner by understanding the uh, values opinions of employees and management and thereby creating a mutual understanding among them next one sociological approaches now this focuses on the upbringing of the parties involved in it 
you know we all belong to different uh, families and we have our own values esteems principles so because of that conflict can arise and this approach tells us to focus on this part okay understand the upbringing the values of uh, the people and then change and then act accordingly you know there was one movie previously which was released which is known as outsourced in that movie you know it, it is a very good movie very interesting movie in that movie one foreigner uh, it, it's it's based on a bpo a bpo industry he comes uh, from some abroad from us or somewhere to india and uh, you know the uh, the the calling the call rate is very less there the productivity is very less there so he has to improve that so he was just uh, thinking you know why why it is not being improving like that then he understands that okay the cult you know they are uh, in the organization girls have to wear a shirt and all formal trousers and all that and they were not comfortable because it was in some kind of village i think so they were not comfortable in the dressing style they were not comfortable in the office environment because in india they were trying to create a us atmosphere which was not working because our upbringings are different right so then uh, the manager the foreign the foreigner he says that okay you can you can be comfortable in your own clothes you can you can make this just just make a home a feel of home so feel comfortable like that so what happened is that they try to dress differently like uh, differently means uh, whatever costumes they are comfortable they will bring they will bring their family photos and all that so that they create such kind of uh, homely environment not creating a us atmosphere they try to bring their own culture to the office so that they are not uh, feeling like an outsider so that is what is this influence of social factors because they have been brought born and brought up like that okay so th- then what happens in that movie is that the productivity will rise and uh, you know all the employees will start lagging and the movie goes on like that so what i am saying is say, saying uh, trying to say is that understand the pulse of the employees where they belong there how they have been brought up whatever uh, you know cultural background they have educational background there and try to work on these factors so that the industrial relations the productivity can be improved the ha- harmonious relationship among management and workers can be improved next one unitary approaches now this approach simply says that industrial conflicts arises because of some small issues some small negligence from the management side and that can be erased by promoting mutual cooperation by understanding individual behavior and by promoting teamwork and com i setting up a common goal that is what unitary approach means now next one human relations approach now this means that you remember uh, i i'm not sure whether you have learned in organizational behavior there is an elton mayo concept in which he says that you you know there are certain tools and techniques which can be adopted to improve the productivity of the employees there are certain extrinsic factors and intrinsic factors thereby improving the job satisfaction and productivity of the employee so the human relation approach means that see uh, in that uh, concept in that old concept they they try to make group they try to promote group behavior like uh, when certain uh, when females when group of eight females were divided into groups they their productivity improved some because of that group performance rather than comparing with individual performance like that so that is what the approach here in industrial relation that is they try to promote or they try to improve job satisfaction and productivity by using extrinsic factors and inter- means uh you know extrinsic factors like more monetary benefits bonuses can be given to the employees and intrinsic factors by providing a good and safety work environment so these are the various factors that should be focused more next one pluralistic approach now this approach is is just the opposite of unitary approach this approach says that it is necessary to be focused on collective bargaining conciliation and arbitration i made a detailed video on collective bargaining i'll leave the link in the district this uh, description box below also i'll put the link in the i card also you can click and watch that video so here plur- pluralistic approach it means that here this is that it is compulsory that to maintain good industrial relations 
collective bargaining conciliation means a uh, conciliation means uh, you know to reconcile that is uh, to make peace uh, to move, reach to a conclusion and arbitration arbitration again means that is a third party will come to resolve the dispute among employee that should be necessarily invo- that should be necessarily invoked in all the organization all the industries next one gandhian approach as the name says gandhi ji's famous principle non violence so a non violence method is used to solve any kind of in- industrial dispute problem next one marxist approach this is again related to you know soci- sociological approach here also marxist approach means it just says like rajnikant uh, says in one movie that rich gets richer and poor gets poorer so he says that industrial conflicts does not arrive arise because of management problem or because of workers problem it arises because of the division of the society the individual needs are different because the society provides less to some category of people and uh, society provides more to other category of people so because of this uh, differences conflict arises in industry also so that is that approach is being uh, focused in marxist approach next one systems approach systems approach means that say there are major three elements in an organization like i said parties involved employers employees and a solution okay or the like government trade unions whoever is involved in that industrial relation so each and every indu- each and every category should be at, should be approached with a should have should be approached systematically then only a positive feedback or positive result can come what they are saying is that management should have a systematic approach towards employees and trade unions should have a systematic approach towards management thereby maintaining a harmony relationship that is what systematic approach means now if you have any doubt please leave in the link description box below i can i'm going it i'm going a little bit speed so because these are all very simple topics and that's why i'm going fast please leave in the description box below if you have any doubts next one industrial relations strategy so there should be some strategy for a successful implementation of uh, industrial relation so first strategy is individualized thinking now this means that these are the pillars of an organization now whenever any changes are being implemented we have to think in such a way that how an individual will be affected by implementing this policy so that is what individualized thinking in industrial strategy one main focus should be kept if you are uh, framing developing a policy or if you are modifying any kind of regulations always keep in mind that how by changing this regulation or by changing this policy an individual may be affected so that is what is this individualized thinking next is policy awareness policy awareness means see you have developed a policy you have created a policy it should be communicated to the mass people group people in all the possible ways that it is that the communication is clear and it is concise that is it has been clearly communicated to the employees you know in uh, in industry it is compulsory that standing order should be there standing order means the rules and regulation for each and every workers and in in certain states they even f- emphasize that it should be also available in local language local language of the state so that it is properly communicated each and every worker should have the understanding of that orders that standing orders so that is what is this policy awareness means now expected group reaction while framing a policy you should have an idea that what will be the group reaction like i said you wanted to check the attendance of the employee you have implemented a system you should have an awareness that how the group will react thereby preparing ourselves preparing uh, by preparing the industry for that consequences or how to tackle that differences of opinion so that is what is a good industrial strategy should have they should focus on individual thinking they should communicate their policy clearly to the employees or workers and they should expect that while implementing this policy what are the possible group reactions that can be expected from the workers 
and they should be in a position to handle these conflicts. Next one, successful industrial relations strategy. Now, always to implement a successful react, uh, industrial relations strategy, some external support should be there, right? Like uh, the points mentioned here, top management support you should have. Then uh, sound personal policy. This means that you should have a good HR policy. Industrial relation policies are there to maintain good harmony among the employees. It should be in uh, alienation or it should be in line with the HR policy. If you have a strong HR policy, you should combine it with good IR policy, industrial relation policy. Now, adequate practice should be developed by professionals. Now, if it is not possible that, uh, you know, internally you are not getting support, then professionals can be brought out from outside to communicate or to implement the industrial relation policies that has been developed. Detailed supervisory training. You should give training to the employees. You should prepare the employees or the workers for these policies. Follow up of results. Now, it's not sufficient that you are you have implemented a policy and you have just left it like that. You have to do constant follow up, take the feedback and if there is any scope of improvement, that also should be implemented. So, these are how a successful industrial strategy, relation strategies can be achieved. So with that, I'm concluding this video. And if you like this video, please like, share and subscribe to this channel. And uh, please leave your valuable comments below. If you have any doubt or if you have any other topic which wants to be discussed, please leave it in the description box below. Thank you for watching this video and stay tuned for more videos like this. Thank you so much.